Hello children. Welcome to the English lesson. I want you to have your workbook, an exercise book and a pen with you. Today we are going to learn about how to use visual clues to convey meaning. So in this lesson you will be able to guess the meaning of the words by looking at the pictures. To begin my lesson, I am going to show you some pictures with rhymes. Look at this slide. Observe the pictures carefully. I know you all love rhymes. Rhymes are very interesting. What is your favorite rhyme? Is it Humpty Dumpty or Baba Black Sheep? No matter. Today we are not going to recite a rhyme. Today I want you to match these rhymes with the pictures. Now let's match the pictures with the rhymes. First one, picture number one. What can you see in this picture? Were you able to match the picture with the rhyme? Yes, it's Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Children, now look at these highlighted words. I have underlined some words. To understand these words, Humpty Dumpty, a wall, great fall, king's men. You can use the given picture. So you will find it easy to understand the words with the picture. Now let's look at picture 2. What is it? Can you guess the picture with the rhyme? Yes. It's Baba Black Sheep. So you can see a black sheep and three bags in the cart. So with these clues you can easily understand the rhyme. Let's look at picture 3. What can you see in this picture? Carefully observe the picture. You can see a girl and a lamb. So, what is the matching rhyme? Yes, it's Mary had a little lamb. So, you can see the underlying words. Mary, little lamb and white. So, the picture clues give you a clear meaning for this rhyme. Now, we we'll look at Picture 4. Here, what can you see in the picture? I know you all can match the picture with the rhyme. Let's see. It's Jack and Jill went up the hill. Now we'll look at the fifth one. The fifth picture. What can you see in this picture? Yes, you can see frogs. How many frogs are there? There are five frogs. So if you observe the first slide carefully, I know you can remember. The rhyme that goes with this picture is five little speckled frogs. Now I know you have a clear idea about understanding the text with the help of the picture clues. If you have picture clues, you can easily get the meaning of the given words. Now I am going to take you to another activity. Here, I have given three pictures in this slide. If you look at these three pictures, in front of each picture, you have given three sentences. Let's read the instructions first. Look at the picture and find the appropriate sentence for the picture. What are you going to do in this activity? You have to read these three sentences and find the most appropriate sentence for each picture. So, now I am going to give you some time to do this activity. Observe these three pictures and write your answers in your exercise. I hope you have done it. Let's see the answers. Yes, the first picture a boy and a girl are playing in the garden. Picture number two. 
The children are playing hide and seek. Let's look at the third picture. The matching sentence or the most appropriate sentence for this picture is The girl is reading a story to the boy. I hope you have got the correct answers. Now I am going to take you to another activity. At the beginning of my lesson I told that we are going to use picture clues to understand the meaning. Here I have given you two pictures, picture A and picture B. I want you to observe these two pictures carefully. You can see some differences, but can you see the context or the setting of these pictures? Yes, these two pictures are home garden. Right. Now what you have to do here is look at the pictures and say whether the statements describe picture A or B. So you have to go through these 10 sentences carefully and find whether it describes picture A or picture B. I, I'll give you some time to read the sentences. While reading the sentences, even you can write your answers. Now we'll check your answers. A man is moving the lawn. Yes, where can you see a man who is moving alone? It's in the first picture, picture A. Number two, mother and her child are sitting on the bench. Can you see a bench in these pictures? Picture one, we don't have a bench. But in the second picture or picture B, you have a blue bench. Did you notice that children? You have a blue bench and on that bench, mother and the child are sitting. So that sentence describes the second picture. Third sentence, there is a big tree front of the house. Yes, you can easily find it. It's in the first picture. Four, the river flows next to the house. If you analyze these two pictures carefully, at once you can see. In the first picture, we don't have a river. But in the second picture, we have a river. So that sentence, sentence number five, describes picture B. Five. Yellow sunflowers grow next to the river. Again, the word river helps you to understand the picture. So, you can find the yellow sunflowers in picture B. 6. The house is pink. A. The girl is reading the book. B. The man is watering the flowers. You can see in picture B, there is a man near the flower bushes and he is watering them. 9. A man is pushing the wheelbarrow. Again, it describes picture B. There is a swing in front of the house. You can see a swing in front of the house in the first picture. So the answer is A. I hope you have done the activity properly. Now children, are you ready to do another activity? In this activity, I have shown two types of instructions. The first type, it is given in picture clues. But the second set of instructions are given in written form. The picture instructions or the picture clues are given in the proper order. But the written instructions are not in the proper order. So, what you have to do is, you have to match the picture clues with the written instructions. And you need to write the relevant number in the given space. So children, it's your time to do the activity. Take your exercise book and write down the relevant number in your book. Don't mix up because if you mix up, you will not get a proper boat.
I hope you have done the activity now. Let's check the answers. I'm going to read the instructions with the picture clues. First one, fold in halves. Number two, fold in halves again. Number three, fold in corners. Number four, fold up edges on both sides. Number five, pull the sides out and flatten. The instruction six, what does it say? It says fold front and back layers up. Seven, pull sides apart and flatten. Eight, pull top flap upwards and the last step the ninth step to get a paperboard is what is it it's squish the bottom and pull the sides up so if you follow these instructions you will easily get a paper now see children if you have instructions with both forms written and picture clues you will find it easy to make a paper board. So now you can say the importance of having picture clues to understand the written form. Now I am going to show you another different kind of activity. I know you will enjoy this activity a lot. Now in this slide I have given you a puzzle. I know we all love puzzles. Don't you? Yes, but in my puzzle, I have not given you written clues. You only have picture clues. You need to use these picture clues to complete this puzzle. You need to complete this puzzle in your exercise book. Don't copy down the puzzle. You can look at the screen and write down your answers in your exercise books using the numbers. I know this task is really easy for you, but you have to be very careful when writing the spellings. The correct spelling is very much important. Let's check your answers. 1. Worm 2. Spider 3. Ant 4. Bird 5. Snail 6. What is number 6? I hope you've got the answer. It's mosquito. 7. Frog. Hang on children. We are going to use the same words for the next activity. Here I have given you some descriptions with blanks. Before doing the activity, let's read these descriptions with blanks. 1. Lives underground. It's brown and it has got no legs. 2. Has got 8 legs and it can make big web with them. 3. Is a little black or red animal that lives in communities. 4. Can fly and lay eggs. It lives in a nest. 5. Is a small animal carries its home everywhere it goes. 6. Is a small animal with wings that can bite you. 7. Is green in color and can jump. It lives in ponds. You have to use the words that you used in the puzzle to complete these descriptions. Now you can write your answers. Let's check the answers. Worm, spider, ant, bird, snail, mosquito, frog. I know it was really easy for you. Now I'm going to use another activity which will help you to understand with the pictures. Here 
I have brought you a picture story. You can see there are six pictures and all these pictures are in order and they tell us a story. Look at the pictures and understand the stories. This picture story tells us about Nisal. Nisal has made a salad for his mother. So, think about a time that you have spent in your kitchen with your mother. And read these sentences. Here you have things that you have done with your mother in your kitchen. Now, what you have to do is, you need to match the pictures with these sentences. The sentences are not in the proper order. You have to read these sentences and write the relevant number in front of the given space. Be careful children, don't mix up. Now do the activity. I hope you have done it nicely. So let's check the answers. Okay, the first picture, what does it show us? Yes, Nisala and his mother went to the market to buy vegetable. Two, Nisal washed all the vegetables. Three, Nisal cut tomatoes. Four, Nisal added lemon, salt and oil. Five, Nisal mixed all the ingredients. Six. And the last thing. What he has done is. Nisal invited his mother. For a plate of salad. She enjoyed it. And thanked Nisal. I hope. You have done. All correct. Today we did several activities. With pictures. To get the meaning of the word. Now I am going to take you to your workbook. Now I have taken this page from your workbook. So children, take out your workbooks and turn to page 190. Activity 4, Revision 3. Here you have given some pictures that shows how Pial spends his day. These are the things that Pial does from morning to evening. We'll see what is he doing. Take out your exercise book and write certain things that you can see in these pictures. Don't worry, I'm here to help you. We'll do it together. Here we have some phrases to describe these pictures. You can read them carefully and check the list that you have written in your book. Getting up Making the bed, taking a wash, brushing teeth, drinking a cup of tea, taking or eating breakfast, listening to the radio. 7. Giving milk to the cat, going to the work by bus, reading the newspaper, taking his lunch, playing the guitar, drinking a cup of tea, Preparing dinner, eating dinner, arranging bed, brushing teeth, going to bed. So, these phrases can be used to describe these pictures. Now, we are going to do something else. I am going to show you a paragraph. This paragraph tells us about Pial's daily routine. So you have to complete these blanks using the phrases that you have written in your exercise book previously. It's your time to complete the activity. Take your time, read the paragraph carefully and do it. Hope. 
you have completed the activity. Shall we check the answers? Yes. I'm going to show you the answers. Now we can read the paragraph with the answers. Pial is an early riser. He gets up at 4 a.m. on weekdays and makes his bed. He takes a wash and brushes his teeth. Pial drinks a glass of milk and takes his breakfast while listening to radio. Pial has a pet cat named Blackie. He gives some milk to Blackie every morning. Although Pial has a car, he never drives to office. Instead, he travels to the office by bus. While traveling, he reads the daily paper. Pial is a duty conscious person. He takes his lunch around 1.30 p.m. After finishing important work. He is a music lover, so plays the guitar after coming back home from office. Pial makes his tea and drinks. Pial spends some time to cook. Usually he cooks for the next day. He watches television while eating fruits. Around 11.30 p.m. he arranges his bed and go to bed after brushing teeth. So this is the way that Pial spends his day. I hope you've got all the answers correct. If not, you can write them in the notebook. Now I'm going to take you to my last activity. Look at this picture. Here I have given you a picture of a family. Observe the picture carefully. What can you see? Yes, the members of this family are doing different things. So you can look at this picture and complete the text. You can write your answers in your exercise book. I hope you have done the activity nicely. Let's check your answers. I am the mother. I am sitting on the sofa next to my husband. Here I have used the word mother. But you can also use the word wife. I am the wife. I am sitting on the sofa next to my husband. If you have written the word wife, that too is correct. We are reading the newspaper. My name is Nisal. I am Raini's brother. I am watching TV. Raini is my sister and she is listening to music. Our dog is very happy and it is eating a sandwich. So you can see the dog with the sandwich. One cat is sleeping on the floor and the other is on the sofa. It is evening and all are relaxing in the living room. There are two bookshelves on either sides of the TV. I hope you have done the activity nicely. Now, when you are doing these type of activities, children, you must be very careful about the spelling. As you have given only one blank, you need to write only one word in each blank. You can't write more than one word. You must remember these things. First, you need to be very careful about the spellings. And the other thing, you can't bring the things beyond the picture. You have to use the things given in the picture. And the other thing is, you need to write or you need to complete the blank 
by using one word. So, we did so many activities today by using pictures. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Until we meet again, goodbye.